Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and today I'm coming to you with an update video on my GHM9 SBR. I recently made a video about this particular gun where I showed that I had a catastrophic failure with it, and I'll show you that right now in case you haven't seen it. Wow. Wow. And so essentially what I had was a ruptured case that blew out the extractor and a couple of other parts like springs and it stopped the gun from operating. Now when I got home and made the video I was trying to figure out what in the heck happened and I had kind of narrowed it down to a couple of things. I thought it might be an out of battery detonation and I also thought it might be an ammunition problem that it was overpowered and over pressured. It just made sense because the case had ruptured and essentially blew out a bunch of parts on the gun. So of course I called B&T and said, hey, I had a problem. Can you guys fix this under warranty? And they said, absolutely. And I sent it to them. I hadn't heard anything back for a couple of weeks. and I really didn't expect to because they just got hit by a hurricane there in the Tampa area. But they called me one afternoon and said, hey, can we chat with you? And I was like, absolutely. And the person I communicated with was named Chris. Now, Chris went through a whole bunch of information on this gun to explain what they think happened. And on this phone call, they also patched in one of their armors, Jordan. Now, I had no idea that they knew I was a YouTuber or even made a video. I was under the assumption they thought I was just another customer, but apparently they watched the channel. So it was kind of a nice touch for them to give me all of this information explaining what's going on and what they diagnosed the problem as so I can inform you. Because in my last video, I know that I raised some concerns and it wasn't anything intentional. I was just trying to diagnose the problem that I experienced. After all, I had a ruptured case. It was massive and blew parts out of the gun. So the first thing I thought, of course, was an overpressured round. After all, if it was overpressured, it's going to blow that case right out of there. Well, B&T told me that it wasn't an overpressured round case. There wasn't a double charge or any of that. They actually test all of their guns to pretty much as maximum pressure as they can with the 9mm. So that wasn't the issue. They actually told me it was an under-pressured cartridge. And I was very surprised with like, like under-pressured? How in the world could that blow the case? Well, they told me that in a direct blowback operated firearm like this, there's a very specific pressure curve that needs to be achieved for the bolt to come back. And if there is a cartridge that is underpowered, all of that powder can burn extremely fast. And that can raise that pressure curve to start to unlock the bolt and push that bolt back. And what ends up happening is before the projectile leaves the barrel, that bolt is already back enough and that pressure spike is still pretty high and that's when that case ruptured. So in their opinion, it was an under-pressured cartridge. Now, they also linked to a Brownells video about this same issue, and I will put that in the description below. And honestly, it looks exactly like the issue that I had. It was an under-pressured round. Now, I've used PMC ammo in the past, and that's the brand of ammunition that I was using in this video, and I have had problems with it being under-pressured and not cycling the action on some pistols. I didn't think I'd have a problem on a PCC like this. So the results of this diagnosis really surprised me. I was worried I had a barrel obstruction or something else, and they said it was an under-pressured cartridge. Now, something that they also told me is that the guns are designed to handle this type of malfunction. One of the reasons that my extractor went flying across the range is that it's designed to come out in case of a catastrophic failure and blow all those parts and all of that gas 
outward, not back towards the shooter. So they actually engineered the bolt with that type of safety in mind. And they showed me and talked to me about that channel for that extractor and how it worked. It makes complete sense. I'm always fascinated by how some of these companies, especially the high-end companies like BNT, take so much time and care into their guns that most people don't even notice because hopefully they never have to experience a catastrophic failure like I had. So I really give B&T a lot of points for that. The other issue that I raised that had some people concerned was an out-of-battery detonation. I thought, well, it could have been an out-of-battery detonation. And I said in that video, I discovered that if I can pull back this charging handle a little bit and bring that bolt back a little bit, if that hammer is cocked and I pull that trigger, the hammer still drops. So that means this gun can probably fire out of battery. And it turns out that is not the case. Even though there's no type of block to prevent the hammer from dropping, it's built into the design of the bolt. So essentially, I will use this little coaster, this little Charlie's coaster here, Charlie's custom clones. I guess I bought something from them at some point. But this coaster is gonna represent the back of the bolt. And we're gonna pretend that the firing pin is right here. And at the bottom of the bolt, there is a 90 degree angle. Now, in order for this firing pin, which is in there with spring tension, the only way that it can be hit and enter the chamber is if the hammer, which is a flat surface, can hit it at that angle. If the bolt is back a little bit, that hammer cannot hit that firing pin. And this steep or sharp angle at the bottom of the bolt is the safety. If it is out of battery, it will not fire. In fact, I'm going to roll in a photo right now with a red arrow showing you this side of the bolt where that edge is. And as you can see, that edge is pretty pronounced and pretty sharp. And it is designed that way on purpose. It prevents the hammer from hitting the firing pin if the gun is a little bit out of battery. So that is another safety feature that they built into this gun. So it cannot fire out of battery. That bolt has to be all the way forward, which gives the dimensions of the hammer to hit that firing pin at that flat angle so it can enter the chamber. If it's back a little bit, it will not hit that firing pin. So I wanna ease everyone's concerns on that. And I really wanna thank Chris and Jordan for going into the engineering and the specs of these guns because I learned so much. One of the reasons I have this channel is I love to learn everything I can about firearms. And when you really get into the nuts and bolts and the nitty gritty of everything, I'm always amazed how there was a decision made about everything about all of your favorite firearms, the reason that it has a Picatinny rail and it's mounted in the height and the size of the trigger guard and the grip, everything is thought about all the way down from the features that you see cosmetically to the features that are inside to make the gun safe. A lot of thought and engineering goes into these and it's one of the reason these guns take so long to come to market once they're announced. They probably prototype these things and then they gotta run thousands upon thousands of rounds and they have to think about all of these issues. What if it does this? What if it does that? Can we engineer it to do this? It's quite amazing. And so I have to tell you that B&T went above and beyond with their customer service on this. And I really appreciate the personalized phone call that I got from them to give me this information to give to you because honestly, that's what this channel is about. It's about learning and sharing information as I discover it. So hopefully it helps other people in the future. So my concerns about this gun have been quelled. I now know it cannot fire out of battery. And now I know to watch out for under pressured rounds because they assured me if it had a even a highly overcharged round, it would run it absolutely fine because they test it and retest it with overpressured rounds all the time. It's designed for that. And these things are built like tanks. It was just that under pressured round that caused the issue. So anyway, I wanted to share all of this information with you because I know you guys might follow my channel because you guys like BNT guns just like I do. And so I learned a lot about this and I hope you guys did too. I wanna personally thank Chris and Jordan for giving me all of this information and contacting me. And I wanna thank BNT for taking care of me, getting this gun fixed, putting in a new extractor, and they even did some extra work that I've been wanting them to do by helping me 
by putting in a new barrel and feed ramp so this thing will now feed hollow points because that was one of the issues with the generation ones they don't feed hollow points but now this one does so i'm glad that i got that upgrade i'm so happy and so excited to get this thing back to the ranch but i'm not going to be running any pmc through this again so there you go an update on my ghm9 sbr thank you bnt and I hope that I shared some information with you guys. And so if you have PCCs like CZ Scorpions or other BNTs or anything that might be direct blowback, watch out for those under pressured rounds. And once again, I'll put a video that Brownells made about that in the description. And I hope that information helps. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.